Good afternoon. Welcome to the lecture on supply chain management. And let's have a look at Canvas for a minute. And you'll see here's Chapter 11, Supply Chain Management, the PowerPoint slides. So if you want to review these on your own, just open up that file. Also, there's a video which I think you've already seen on the Ford's uh, Rouge plant and that's relevant for this chapter because supply chain management started after Henry Ford's uh, vertical integration. Okay, so let's have a look at the slides on supply chain management. It's chapter 11 in the textbook and these are the sections of the textbook. Notice that I've crossed out 11.6 so don't worry about that chapter. In, the, uh, in this presentation, there's going to be the following sections, introduction, strategies, a little bit on collaboration, and some on managing the supply chain. And then I'll talk about logistics and measuring supply chain performance. So we'll see how this goes. I might break this into two separate sections. OK, so for a historical perspective, before supply chain management became uh, popular, most companies were vertically integrated. And Ford's Rouge plant is a very good example of that. And maybe take a few minutes to watch at least the first half of that video. The second half kind of gets into other things. But with Ford's Rouge plant, as you can see, they had raw materials coming in and they actually even own their own ships and those came in and they were processed and made into steel and moved around the factory in their own rail lines uh, they had their own security force and the outcome of that was one car per minute so it was a very high rate it was very efficient but it was not very flexible uh, Henry Ford's famous saying is they can have any color they want as long as it's black. So there were some limitations to the historical method. Um, there's technology and logistics constraints. There was limited foreign commerce, so most things made in America were sold in America and things made in Japan were sold in Japan. And there were also prejudices that came into play. After World War II, people in America did not want to purchase things made in Japan. So there was a, a barrier to entry to a lot of uh, other companies. So here's one definition for supply chain management, but it's very, uh, I don't know, not complex, but it's just very wordy and it's not very detailed. So I like to use a different definition. And here it is in the top. So it's the management of three things. It's managing the flow of products, money, and information. And those three things have to be managed in every supply chain. Products move down the supply chain. Money moves normally up the supply chain. And information has to move in both directions. Here's an example of a supply chain for making beer and this is right out of the textbook if you want to read more about it you can here's another illustration of a contemporary supply chain this is what we see today uh, so in a in a contemporary or a modern supply chain unlike Henry Ford it's not one factory or one company doing everything but it's many smaller companies doing many different parts. And as you can see here, there's many different raw materials. They go to different manufacturers and move along through transportation, sometimes warehousing, and eventually on to the customer. And you notice that down at the bottom, here's a, an entirely separate supply chain. It's using some common materials and it's using some common transportation people and maybe going to the same customers or different customers eventually. So the nice thing with a modern supply chain is 
when demand changes, some supply chain members are able to switch from one chain to another. So for example, this warehouse might take part in this supply chain if there's not enough business from the blue supply chain. And there's many things that need to be managed in a supply chain. Forecasting demand, quality management, distribution of products, inventory management, manufacturing, marketing and sales, and the materials themselves. So supply chain management looks at all of those different components. Here's some kind of important events that led to supply chain management. And really a lot of these were key to making it possible. For example, right at the top, forklifts and pallets and shipping containers and barcodes. Those are all things that didn't really exist in Henry Ford's River Rouge plant uh, in those days. But without them, a supply chain really wouldn't be able to manage because there's just no way to control and manage all those products moving back and forth between companies and between countries. So some considerations with supply chains. Uh, there are many ethical considerations. You maybe have heard of Nike being beaten up in the news over their child labor in other countries. And people make fun of their just do it slogan when they show the picture of the child making their runners. And then here's another one of some corporate executive uh, acknowledging that he has to be socially responsible, but he really doesn't want to be. They just know that they need to be. So society's putting a lot of pressure on supply chains. And even things like natural disasters put new strains on supply chains, such as the Haiti earthquake a few years ago, where thousands were killed and millions homeless, and somehow they had to bring supplies, water and food to all these people. So it was quite a challenge. As far as strategies for supply chains, there are many different strategies of how companies do it. And some are successful and some are not. For example, here's two computer companies, Gateway Computer and Apple Computer. I know everyone's heard of Apple Computer, but maybe you haven't heard of Gateway because they actually don't exist anymore. So both of these computer companies had stores for selling their computers, um, but they took very different strategies at how to do it. Gateway owned and built their own stores. They had no inventory in their stores and it didn't really work out very well for them. So you could go to a Gateway store and you could touch and feel and, and check out their computers and their tablets, but you couldn't actually purchase one there. So you could go and look, but you couldn't buy it. And people really didn't like that business model because when you're ready to buy something, especially something fun like a computer or a tablet, you oftentimes want to just go do it, just go get it. So that didn't work out very well for Gateway and they went out of business. Apple, as you know, you can go to an Apple store, you can touch and feel and play with the products, you can talk to people about the products and you can actually buy it right while you're there, assuming they have it in stock. So it's a very different business model and part, probably not all, but part of those decisions led to the success of Apple and the failure of Gateway. Here's another example of different strategies with similar companies. Granger and McMaster Carr. McMaster Carr, well first of all, both of these companies sell industrial products. They sell uh, pumps and motors, they sell safety supplies like gloves. Um, everything that a factory or manufacturer might need to keep their equipment uh, maintained and operating. So McMaster Car, they have just a very few, very huge distribution centers. One's nearby us in uh, Santa Fe Springs, but generally they're, they're very far from where the customers are. So most customers can't just get in their car and drive down and buy what they want. 
Granger, on the other hand, they have many, many smaller distribution centers, and they tend to be conveniently located, kind of like the 7-Eleven of industrial supplies. So with Granger, customers can get in their car and drive down and buy what they need, although they don't have as big a selection as McMaster Car, so they might not have what they need. So very different strategies for similar products. Now the next section is also from the textbook and it's six sourcing strategies. First one is many suppliers, com commonly used for commodity products. And a commodity is something that is easily duplicated and repeatable and it's something that many people sell, such as perhaps uh, dishwasher soap is a commodity. And PC computers have become a commodity. You can pretty much buy any kind of PC these days and they're all going to work approximately the same. So when you're buying a new computer, it's really a lot of it's based on price, not just uh, one brand versus another brand. Another strategy is with few suppliers. Uh, in that supply chain strategy, long-term relationships are built and companies work together. Maybe a good example would be Chevrolet Automaker and uh, Firestone Tire Makers. So Chevrolet would buy tires from Firestone uh, over many multi-year contracts and they would just kind of partner together that way. A third one is vertical integration, and that's what Henry Ford did, and that's where one company does many of their own processes. And here's some examples on the PowerPoint slide. Joint ventures is another strategy where companies come together and they collaborate to build one product together. Uh, one example in the car industry is Toyota and Subaru. They make a, a small sports car. Toyota calls it the FZR, I think it is. And Subaru, I think it's called the BRZ or something like that. Anyway, they're identical cars. They're made in the same factory. They might have a little bit of difference in the interior, you know, colors and some of the design, but essentially they're the exact same cars. So it's a joint venture by those two companies. They're still separate companies. They just, for that one particular product, they decided to get together and do it together. Um, they may continue, they may do that with more products, or they might say that that's enough. We've done that and we're not going to do it again. Another one is Kiritsu Networks. And it's kind of a, a middle ground and it's not too commonly known, so I'm not going to dwell on that and you can cross it off your list of study notes. And lastly, there's virtual companies. And that's, there's a lot of different examples and different way people do that, but one kind of, kind of a virtual company is actually Amazon. So when you go shopping on Amazon, sometimes you're purchasing from Amazon, you're buying an Amazon product. In fact, Amazon even has their own, some products made for them. But sometimes when you buy through Amazon, you're actually buying from a different vendor. And Amazon is just acting as a virtual company. They're just uh, taking the order and passing the order on to the, the company that's actually selling it to you. And so in that way, they're acting as a virtual. And I think at that point, I'm going to end this video. And I'll start up a new video for the following sections on collaboration, managing the supply chain, logistics, and measuring the supply chain. So that's it for this video. Thanks.